As I've covered many times on the channel before, most large countries have problems with invasive species. Some countries are more badly affected than others, and there are some areas that are famous for having lots of invasive species. An invasive species is an organism that causes ecological or economic harm in an ecosystem where it doesn't belong. And when a large predator enters a non-native ecosystem, it's usually bad news for the native species. Invasive predators can wipe out native prey species, and in some cases they even target the native predators. As I've covered in some previous videos, native species do sometimes fight back. And strangely, some invasive species will also fight other invasive species. In some of the worst affected areas such as Florida, you can find plenty of animals from multiple ecosystems around the world. Every now and again, two non-native species can meet in Florida, and they may even choose to fight each other. Of course, this situation is not unique to Florida, but it's one of the most famous examples. And in today's video, I will be going through a few more. That's because I will be focusing on areas that are badly affected by invasive species, and I will be going through three invasive species that prey on other invasive species. And for our first story, we will be heading over to the beautiful country of Japan. And Japan does have quite a few problems with invasive species. Some of Japan's most famous invaders have come through the pet trade, such as feral cats and most famously raccoons. If you want to find the majority of Japan's invaders, all you have to do is head into the water, as Japan has quite a few invasive fish, and it also has quite a lot of invasive semi-aquatic mammals. Muskrats and koi poo can be found in the waters of Japan, and these two rodents can cause quite a lot of damage. The koi poo can destroy river banks and disrupt farming, and the muskrats will compete with native species, and also feed on the native bird's eggs. Although for some people it can be easy to villainize invasive species, it's important to remember that it's not the animal's fault. They are not purposely causing problems, they are just trying to survive. And this is especially the case with the muskrat and the koi poo. These American invaders weren't introduced through the pet trade, but they were instead introduced for fur farming. Animals in fur farms are usually kept in cramped conditions, and they have a very poor quality of life. Both of these rodents were bred for their fur during the war, and after the war, some of these creatures escaped or were released into the wild. Strangely, these two rodents weren't the only two semi-aquatic mammals to escape, as the American mink also found its way into the wild. American minks are bred for their fur all over the world, and that's one of the reasons why it's a notorious invasive species. They often find their way out of captivity, and this is why they can be found across Asia and Europe today. Although the American mink really is bad news for the Japanese ecosystem, it does also help to combat invasive species as well. The American mink will take down native birds, fish, and amphibians, but it will also take down invasive creatures too. Strangely, a lot of the animals it can find in its native ecosystem, it can also find in Japan. In Japan, it can prey on smallmouth and largemouth bass, as well as mosquito fish, rainbow trout, brown trout, and of course, muskrats. The American mink is very capable of taking down these prey items as it targets them in its native range. And although it is bad news for the Japanese ecosystem, at least it's taking down other invaders as well. For our next story, we will be heading over to North America, and more specifically the Great Lakes. Over the years, the Great Lakes have had quite a few problems with invaders, with most problem fish coming from Europe. In the past, rough, tench, and whales catfish have been found in the Great Lakes, but one of the most famous European invaders is the round goby. This species is a relatively small fish, reaching a maximum size of around 25 centimeters long, and for the most part, it seems quite inconspicuous. It's thought that this species was first introduced into the Great Lakes in the 1990s, and it got there through the ballast water on some large ships. Although the round Brown goby is a small fish, it can cause big problems, as they not only compete with native fish such as darters and log perches, but they also directly prey on them. Of course, they are too small to target adult fish, so instead they go after their eggs. As well as this, they also target native invertebrates, and they've even been associated with outbreaks of botulism, which causes large die-offs in diving birds. It's obvious that this fish is bad news for the Great Lakes, but it's not the worst species to arrive from Europe. The zebra mussel was famous for being one of the worst invasive species in the US, and it came over on the same ships that the round goby did. The zebra mussel is not only bad news for the native species, but it's also bad news for the economy. They are able to spread extremely quickly, and they can completely take over some waterways. They manage to get their way into water pipes and hydroelectric turbines, and this causes millions of dollars worth of damage. In some parts of the Great Lakes, zebra mussels seem almost unstoppable, but it does have one very familiar predator. 
The round goby and the zebra mussel are both native to Europe and Asia, and they are found in the exact same ecosystem. In their native range, the round goby will happily feed on zebra mussels, and it mirrors this behaviour in the US. Even though they do cause problems, they are quite important for the health of the Great Lakes, as they are one of the few fish in the Great Lakes that will target zebra mussels. So even though they cause problems, they also help out too, but the Great Lakes would be a lot better off if they were both gone. But for our final story, we will be heading south to Florida, because I will be focusing on the Burmese python. Now the story of the Burmese python in Florida is quite a famous one, and they've been here since the early 80s. The first population was thought to be made up of escaped pets, but these snakes quickly multiplied. Over the past few decades, they have had a massive negative impact on the Floridian ecosystem, and this is mainly by preying on the native species. There has been a massive die-off in mammal numbers in the Everglades, and this has been heavily linked to the spread of the Burmese python. The most severe declines in native species have occurred in the remote southernmost regions of the Everglades, and this area has a large number of these snakes. In 2012, a study showed that raccoon numbers had dropped 99.3%, opossums had declined 98.9%, bobcats 87.5%, and species such as marsh rabbits and foxes have effectively disappeared. Because these animals can cause so much damage in the Everglades, the government has come up with quite a few ways of controlling them. There are specially trained sniffer dogs that will sniff out these pythons, and each year there's a competition to see who can kill the most pythons. Once again, it may seem easy to villainize this species, and of course they do need to be controlled in Florida, but they need to be controlled humanely. Even though the Burmese python has been very successful in Florida, it's a completely different story in its native range. It is currently listed as vulnerable, and its numbers are decreasing in the wild. Strangely, these pythons don't only go after prey animals, as they even target native predators. They are known to battle alligators in the Everglades, and sometimes the alligators win, and other times the Burmese python wins. Florida is possibly the most famous hotspot for invasive species in the world, and really I could have picked multiple invaders for this video. The Burmese python isn't the only large predatory snake in the Everglades, as you can also find invasive African rock pythons, reticulated pythons, and of course the green anaconda. Not only do these snakes prey on other invaders such as plecos, walking catfish, tilapia and iguanas, but they are also targeted by other invasive species themselves. The small population of invasive Nile crocodiles will happily target these snakes, and invasive lizards such as tegus and Nile monitors will happily go after their eggs. This just outlines the major problem that is Florida, and at this point it really seems out of control. If you know of any other stories that could have made it on this list, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.